And let's just sit pretty much at the front of the chair, thinking about lifting your spine up. Feet and knees hip width apart, so just the same as in our regular Pilates classes when we're standing, when we're setting ourselves up in the warm up, we're thinking about good alignment. And then let's take the crown of the head up towards the ceiling, sitting up as tall as possible and just take some shoulder rolls. Going backwards with those shoulders, mobilising and then bringing your hands onto your shoulders and circling the elbows. So it hasn't really got much to do with the hips, although I would like you to just really think about, so when we do these elbow circles, I encourage people to try and move the rib cage. If I go slightly to the side, so I'm actively shifting my rib cage forwards and backwards. I'm, I'm exaggerating that movement when I turn to the side to show you. Um, but keep it, so keep it as big or small as you like. But the bigger the circles go, the more I feel like I naturally want to shift my rib cage forwards and backwards. And then just notice how that affects your pelvis. So I can feel that my um, pelvis is just rocking backwards and forwards a little bit. And again, if you've got a cushioned, nice cushioned seat, you might not notice that. But that's what we're trying to achieve, is this, uh, this awareness of the position of your hips and what's going on in your hips when you're doing other things in your body. So now let's reach up. Try and touch the ceiling. Lifting up one side and then the other. And you can't do, you can't do a great, you don't want to do a great big side bend here. You just want to try and reach up and touch the ceiling. And I want you to think about your sit bones and think about them being equally weighted on the chair. Now hold both arms up. So this is a little bit uncomfortable. Everything is lifted up, shoulders are up around my ears. It's all a little bit, all a little bit, oh, I'm going to let the arms lower and then lower my eye line, but feel like I've got this lovely length in my spine all the way through. And I feel like I've lifted my rib cage up and out of my hips. So I'm not collapsed and slumped how we would naturally be if we're, especially when we're sitting all the time and we're not aware of it. So lifting the rib cage off of the hips. And then from there, we're just going to take some heel, start, let's start with heel raises, alternating heel raises. So you can either just have your hands relaxed on your thighs Try and keep that length in the spine or have your hands just down by your side, touching the edge of the chair. We're going to move on from here to lift the heel and lift the whole leg and then place back down, going through the toes maybe. Not too particular with the feet, but just go through those two, the stages. So lift the heel, lift the foot, whole foot off, go back through the toes, then lower the heel. And now maybe pop your hands on your hips. This is quite hard work at the front of your hips, working your hip flexors. So our hip flexors are notoriously tight, weak, um, just, yeah, this is about strengthening them, lifting the leg, and but practicing sitting up really tall as well. It's actually quite hard work. I can feel myself getting warm already. <laughs> We've hardly done anything. So it is quite a nice day today. So I'm making, I want you to just be very aware, maybe dig your fingers into that crease at the front of your hips. And notice, feel the hip flexor, uh, your iliopsoas, just, it's like a, it's like a, a sort of, um, what's the word? No, it's gone, I can't think of it. It's like a pulley, that's better, yeah. It's like a pulley that's lifting that leg up. And that, muscle and those tendons and everything are attached actually to your your lowest ribs at the back goes through your hip joint which is why it's so important um, but also why this is a good thing to do to try and keep the upper body absolutely still lift your knees up slightly you might only be able to do the just lifting the foot off very a, a tiny amount just lift the heel and lift the toe but without any change then we know that this is all, everything's in the correct position and that's really key. It's not making you collapse, not making you round your back in order to lift those legs up. So then let's take the feet a little bit wider. So I've sort of gone to the width of my chair legs now, so maybe shoulder width apart. And again, focusing on this crease here where we're, um, 
where we're sitting up. So this right angle from the torso to the thighs. Pitch forwards, but keep your back in its natural curves. So keep like a straight back, if you like. So this is a hip hinge. I do this all the time in my classes when we're standing. Um, and we, we look at it look at it as a movement a, a lot. What I'm wanting you to think about is noticing that the shape of your spine isn't changing. But where the part that is changing and changing its shape or um, yeah, the, the only part really where there's a there's a, a big amount of movement is at the hip at this junction of the hip, if you like, and it's because you're closing down that, that hinge. And that's really important. So the same, thing was, it, the same thing was happening when we were lifting one leg at a time. It's a bit harder with your legs wider, actually, but I'll try. Um, so same thing is happening there. We're, we're changing this joint, but now we're trying to lift the leg. Now we're pitching the whole of the body forwards and then coming upright. Great. Let's bring the, yeah, let's keep the feet where they are. So now I want you to think about the pelvis as a whole. Imagine the pelvis is like a bowl. And you're going, oh, it's a rhyme. We're going to tuck the pelvis under and then come back to a neutral position. So if I maybe go turn my chair sideways. So I'm tucking under. It's really scooping in my lower abdomen and then coming back to a neutral position. Tucking under. What I want you to really think about is those sit bones. So the sit bones are the bony parts of your pelvis that you feel that you, you're sitting on. One either side, and when you're sitting really upright, it's like you're drilling a hole down into the floor. When you take this pelvic tilt action, um, it feels to me like my sit bones sort of slide along, and now they're, they're pointing in the direction of my knees, if you like, because I've really tucked the pelvis under. And I'm, I'm just, allowing my back to round a little bit. So this is waking up all of your internal stabilizing muscles that support, that support the hips, it's all very complicated. Pelvic floor is waking up. We're just mobilizing, working those um, deep muscles that we don't necessarily switch on very often. So now let's take the pelvis round in a circle. So you're going to go to the back, you're going to go round to one side and feel like you're rolling around your sit bone. Come forwards, maybe a little bit more pitched forwards than we just were, round to the other side and then round to the back. Keep going in the same direction for maybe three or four. Focus on the weight through the sit bones or through the, the bottom half of the pelvis as a whole. My shoulders, my ribs are staying fairly still. Now I'm gonna change directions. I'm going to the back first, all the way round. It's like you're rolling on that outside edge of that sit bone. Just think of it as the outside edge of your chair, if you want your chair seat, rolling back. And in order to allow this movement to happen in our hips, we need the rib cage to be lifted off. If you slump down, just try it. Try and do it in a slump. It's like, ooh, everything gets, ooh, it doesn't feel nice. So we want to be really lifted up in that, in that, uh, the rib cage lifted up off of the hips. Uh, one last movement here, quite a subtle movement. We're going to look at rotation. And I, it's, it's sort of like a push and pull shuffle. So I'm now thinking of my uh, hip bones. So, so from here, from maybe from side to side. Well, actually, put your hands on your thighs. Um, so we're going to pull one hip back and push the other one forwards. But I'm actually moving my knees. So this is rotation. So rotation of the pelvis, but it's not. A, a shortening, it's not a lifting either side, that's completely different. And actually if you try that as well, this is quite hard work, uh, oh I've not done that, that before, so you're, you're shifting over to one side and hitching at the waist, so you're actually actively lifting one buttock off the chair. And if you look down at your knees, so this is not a bad thing to be doing either, I, I'm always up for finding new ways of uh, moving. 
Um, but if you look down at your knees, they're staying level with each other. So because we're, we're moving this way from side to side, the movement that I would like you to try now is a rotational movement, but this stays on the same level. So therefore, I end up with one knee in front of the other, and then the other knee in front of the other. Shoulders, hands stay fairly still. And you might find this is quite hard work in the legs, and it should be. It's, it's a good warm-up. So pushing and pulling for rotation. Okay, so sitting right at the very front of your chair, let's bring our legs together. We're going to just uh, take some movement with the legs. I think I'm going to need to go back a bit, actually. I'm going to hit my, hit my notes. Uh, we're going to take some movement with the legs and try and keep the rest of the body still. So start with your feet and knees together. Let's just turn one knee out to the side. And I'm, I'm sort of leading with the foot. So I've turned that knee out to the side. Don't worry if it doesn't go completely to the side. It's absolutely fine. Leading with the toes and then I'm going to come back. Let's stay on one side. Let's do five of each. So opening out and coming back. So you might want to put your hands on your hips. And this again is quite strong work, and especially in the, in the hip flexors. Two more, I think. Or you might just want to hang on to the, the, the base of the chair and sort of sit up and, put, and pull against it a little bit, just to give you that support. Let's try the other side. So opening out. And notice I'm wincing a bit on this side. So this is definitely my tighter hip. So my right leg is my dominant leg, I'm right-handed, I lead everything with my right leg, which means it's generally a bit weaker for one leg standing, because the left leg is always the foundation of your pushing off when you're, when you're walking, because you're leading everything. And because the left leg is generally, in my case, stronger, uh, it will also be tighter, and it is definitely tighter in the hip. And so just, if this is just about experiencing that for yourself, knowing which is your tighter side, and then maybe doing a couple extra on the tighter side. So let's move on, back to the first leg, over to one side, so we're turned out, and then just straighten the leg and bring it in and come back. And again, five of those. Straighten the leg, in fact, let's straighten the leg, turn the foot in at the ankle, turn the leg out and come back to parallel. Turning out, extending, foot in. So, Lots of things going on here. We're moving the ankles and knees. We're sort of exploring the range of movement that we've got. And there's loads of movement. And it's good to go right to the very end of the movement. Last one here, I think. If you've done your five and I'm still rambling on and carrying on on that leg, then feel free to swap to the other side. So we're opening out, straightening that leg, turning the foot in. So the first one, uh, of a new exercise on your tighter side will always feel a little bit and then hopefully the more you do as it starts to build up so I'm now on number three I think it's getting a little bit easier partly because your brain is working out which muscles to switch on and how to use how you know how to use and how to get the job done effectively but also because the muscles themselves are activating and hopefully you're activating the right ones. So, last thing here, uh, we're going to open out the leg, straighten the leg, turn that foot in and now sweep it round along the floor and bring it back in. Same thing, knee and foot lead out to the side, extend the leg, flex, don't, don't flex the foot, turn the, the ankle in, sweeping round. You could stay quite rotated in if you want to until you come back. There. And opening out, opening out, I think that was the last one, I'm going to swap sides anyway. Opening out, straighten, sweep it round. So this is all inspired by uh, a Garuda workshop I did a little while ago. So lots of lovely mobilising, but what's also great, and you're probably not even realising it, is we're practising this wonderful sitting upright, which we all need. We're, we're increasing our stamina and endurance in our endurance muscles in the back. Let's do that uh, one more time each way, um, each side, sorry, but reverse that big circle. So you're going to go forwards, 
the heel is pushing you around. That feels very different. Then you're turning out, then you're bringing the leg back in. Forwards, the heel, that outside edge of the ankle. Trying to stay nice and upright. I'm having to watch that this, the knee I'm not using. One more, I think. I think I keep doing an extra one on each side. The, well, the leg I'm not using wants to drop out to the side to counterbalance. Try not to let that happen. So extending the leg forwards. Brrr, sweep it round. There's that first one on the not so good side. Turn it out. So maybe put your hands on your hips now. This also encourages you to sit nice and tall. Two more, I do believe. Notice how I'm very good at counting on this side because I don't want to do any more. That's it, well done. And that's the last one. Fabulous. Okay, we are taking a wide leg. So when I was preparing for this class and preparing for a, a client of mine who has arthritis in the, her hips, um, which a lot of us do, uh, I was looking up lots of hip exercises. Um, uh, one of the things was lifting the, the knees up, one, and, and they, they all said about squats. So, and sit to stand, squatting, having that strength in the legs, it's the hinging at the hips that's really important. So that's what we're going to do from here. So take those legs even wider, so you, uh, I can see my chair legs in the, in the monitor. I'm taking my... I'm turning my legs out within my hip socket, so knees, ankles, toes, about two minutes to and two minutes past the hour. So this would be absolutely parallel. And this is two minutes to and two minutes past. Equal, equally weighted. And I just want you to come back to that hip hinge that we were doing earlier. In fact, I'm just going to put my chair on a slight angle so that you can see what's going on here, hopefully. So hinging and coming upright. So you might find that you're getting a bit of a stretch in the groin as you pitch forward. It's absolutely fine. Just be very aware there's no change in the shape of your spine as you pitch forwards. So now we're going to pitch forwards, hinge from your hips. Just take your weight into your heels. So lift your bottom off the chair and then drop your bottom back down again, sitting at the front if you can and then come up quite upright. So forwards, bottom is off, down, and come upright. Great, all we're going to do from there, let's take those arms forwards a little bit now. So we're in our deep squat, we're on the way to a deep squat for sure, all the way forwards, and now I just want you to straighten the legs and come up. Then we're going to send the bottom back, bring the arms forward a little bit, hover that butt, drop it down, and come back again. So pitching forwards all the way up, send that bottom back. So if this is too much for you today, maybe the knees aren't great, um, just maybe this just isn't something that you're able to do at the moment, Work towards it. What you could do in the chair is have a cushion, have a higher cushion, so that you're higher up when you actually sit down. So something like this. It's not a very good cushion because it's too squidgy, but it didn't make much difference. But something quite high up so that you haven't got so far to come up and sit down again. So it's all about the hinging at the hips, knees over toes, that really good alignment, sitting up and standing down. Uh, sitting up, sit to stand, let's leave it there. <laughs> okay, so brilliant. Wide leg hip hinge for sit to stand. Okay, we're going to take the legs out to quite an extreme position now. So we're going all the way out to opening them out as far as you can. And again, just sit right on the very edge of your chair if you can. And again, this is a strong stretch here. What's quite nice about it is if you can't manage to do this when, we're, when you're standing, and again, I do this quite a lot in my classes, it's called, a, it's like a ballet plie. So turning the legs out, yeah, when we're seated, you haven't got any pressure through your knees. So just focus on the good alignment, getting those legs out evenly if you can. And let's just take some reaches up from here again. 
So trying to touch the ceiling, lifting the rib cage, thinking about sit bones, hold both arms up and then lower down, keep that length in the spine. Let's just take one arm up to the ceiling and take a nice side bend, swapping over. Keeping the weight even on your sit bones. Keeping the rib cage lifted off of the hips. So just mirroring me if you can. One more each side. Brilliant, adding on a little bit if you want to. So we're over to the side. You're gonna roll down with that arm and your head and your shoulders a little bit. Swap the arms over, come up to the other side and come back to the center. Over to the side, roll the head round, rolling from side to side and coming up. So you might be thinking, well, what the hell has this got to do with the hips, Mandy? But we're looking at the whole, the body as a whole. This is why I realise I'm not very good at doing really short classes because I like to, if we're doing a class, if we're doing an exercise, you know, if you're doing taking time to do your exercise, you might as well do a bit of everything to keep everything mobile. So this is all about just mobilising the sides of your spine. But notice as well, let's do four more as you do this. Notice what's going on in those hips, in those legs, as you roll from side to side. Hopefully, it should also feel quite nice to move the body. So rather than just spending the whole time focusing on our hips, we are getting the rest of the body just stretched out and mobilised a little bit. Brilliant, okay, this is probably getting a little bit uncomfortable. So we're going to drop one knee in. So I'm gonna drop one knee in all the way um, to basically turning that whole thigh bone in, inward. So both knees are essentially facing the same way. I've got my back buttock cheek still on the chair. This one has come off because I've brought that knee in. I'm gonna place my hand on the, the chair and just come off. So I'm sideways on to the chair, but I've got the back hand uh, resting on the chair. So I've got quite a nice bit of support there. Then I'm going to sit back down again and open the legs out. Swap to the other side. So drop the knee in. This hip is already off. You might just want to stay here. You might want to stay with security of the, the back buttock still being on the chair. But if you can, put your hand there so that you square yourself up completely as in shoulders and hips facing the side of the room and you've got the chair for support but you've fully rotated that leg in and legs are nice and parallel and then open up again. Let's do two more of those. Drop the knee in, swap to the other side and opening out. Just making sure you're breathing all the way through. So when I'm here, it's like, it's a really nice bit of way of assisting for my perfect uh, lunge position with 290 degrees without any stress on the on the knees because I'm supporting my weight on my hand. Let's do one more of those each side. So we're there and go back and there, go back. Brilliant. We're going to just add a couple of stretches to that. Stretching our hip flexors is a, is a really key thing. So turning all the way to the side. So you can either be, so you could do this whole thing uh, it's perched on the chair, I'm hands free, I've got my back buttock on the chair. Uh, but if you can, straighten out that back leg now. I've got my hand on the chair, so straighten that leg out. Take your other hand, the hand that's closest to the screen, down to the floor. So it's just opposite your, it's next to your foot, your front foot. Back leg is straight, drop the hips down. If you can, you don't have to. But if you can, I'd love you to take that arm up to the ceiling and rotate around and breathe. And then place the hand back on the chair and then lift your chest, but keep that back leg straight. So a really strong stretch at the front of this hip. Let's just do one more of those, each of those, this side. Hand down, lift the arm up, rotate. You could maybe open up a little bit more in 180 degrees, hand back on the chair, or you could be seated here if you've had enough and that back leg is straight, and then really try and lift the chest, 
maybe take that arm up to the ceiling if you want a little bit more here. Wonderful. Come back Ooh, in the centre and to the other side. All the way round. So either stay seated on the chair. Try and do the same things on both sides. Sides if you can. Oh, I've got to give myself a splinter there. Uh, straighten out the back leg. Hand down to the floor. So at the moment my hips are still quite high. I want you to drop your hips down. That's the idea of this. Either staying there or take the hand off the chair. Turn away from the screen. Try and touch the ceiling with the top arm and lift down to the floor, but drop the hips down, keep the legs straight. Come back to the hand on the chair. Now lift your chest. Oh yeah, so a really strong stretch all at the front of your hip here. One more down to the floor. Drop those hips down a little bit lower if you can maybe. Arm up to the ceiling. Try and rotate a tiny bit more. Hand down to the floor, sorry, hand down to the chair, back on the chair, stretching out, maybe take that arm up to the ceiling, drive those hips forwards. That's a strong old stretch. Brilliant. And come back to your chair, bring your legs in. Whew. I feel like my thighs are getting a quite a good workout as well. Great. Okay, we've got one more thing to do. Uh, using the chair before we finish seated on the chair again uh, and this it's just tricep dips so I'm going to go on an angle and again just be to while we're here get some strength get some movement in uh, in that upper body so a couple of things here actually that you could sit up really nice and tall take hold of the lower part of the back of your chair pin your elbows together in fact let's just do this first so a nice stretch all the way across the front of your chest. Whew. So the higher up you go with your hands, maybe the arms will be more bent. Maybe you can pin those elbows in together a little bit closer. Good. Because the reason I want you to do that, I want you to have a nice open chest as we do these tricep dips. So you're going to come forwards onto the front of your chair with your hands. Fingertips facing forwards and your legs are bent and your, your butt has come off the chair but it's just brushing the front of that chair. So you could just stay here if you wanted to. If you're staying here, it's absolutely fine. I encourage you to really try and lift your chest up and this is strong enough work on the backs of the arms as it is. But if you can, I'd like you to try and bend those arms, bend and straighten. Just let that lower back brush past the edge of the chair. If you're out here, it's much harder. If you do want to work harder, straighten the legs. That gives you more weight. So I'm gonna keep my legs bent <laughs> to work with. Try and keep those shoulders opened up. It's very easy to get too far rounded here. Open those shoulders up. Another five or so when you would like to stop. Do another five. Five, four, three, two, one, and oh. Oh, sit back on your chair. Let's have a little uh, hug of our upper body or upper body. Just relax your upper body over your legs. Let those head hang. Nod your head, shake your head, and then rolling up through the spine. Okay, moving on to some standing work, but using the chair. So again, in my classes, I would quite often uh, do these sort of things, not necessarily this one, but something very similar, but without any use of the chair. So it's great to have the chair, Try not to be too reliant on it, but that might be where you are today, and that's absolutely fine. Make sure you're square to the chair. Uh, I'm going to stay sideways on for the moment. So we're going to take a knee fold and a calf raise, and then a hip hinge and swing the leg back. So this is born from looking at the exercises on, on YouTube that's available for hip exercises. So we always want to, we want to be doing knee folds. 
We want to be doing leg swings or leg, leg extension, hip extension, sorry, and um, hip abduction. So that's what we're going to combine today. This is a little bit stronger, this one. So standing on one leg, so we've also got one leg balance to contend with. Standing on one leg, and I'm going to use the leg that's, I'm going to move the leg that's closest to the monitor so that you can see. I'm drawing this knee in, and I'm going to come up onto a, a, a right, right up onto the ball of my foot on that standing leg, nice and straight. I'm going to lower that heel, bend the knee, hinge at that hip, and swing the leg back. And I'm just flexing my foot there. I don't know why, it just feels like a good thing to do. I feel like I want to point my toes when I draw this knee in. So straight leg, come up onto a rise. See how high you can lift that knee up. Lower and swing back. It's quite strong on that foot. In fact, let's just do, before we do that, sorry, let's go both feet together and just take the, take the calf raise on its own. Hopefully you should be okay to be without hanging on to the chair. Yeah, that feels a bit better. Good, so then let's go to that, just the one leg. So this is the whole movement. So we're lifting the knee, coming up into that calf raise, lowering the heel, swing the leg, and hinge at your hips. And lift, and swing and hip. Hip, pillar, hip, hinge. Lift, and swing. I'm getting a little bit too close to my chair. Yeah. So this could be done with your support sideways. So you could go here. If, and especially if you're using something like the wall, don't keep your arms stuck in one place so that if you're there, it's, it's making your shoulders uh, rotate. Just move it about because it's just there as a support. Okay, how's that feeling? <laughs> My standing leg, not the swinging leg, the standing supporting leg is really starting to feel some work. Which is exactly what we want. Give that a little break. Okay, let's go just do that on the other side. So if you're using your chair, swap the chair to the other side. So we could, you could use your chair with just the one hand as well, which I might do on this side. So here and swing back. So the most important thing for me with this is that you are aware of your tissue box as I call it and that's your your hips and your hips and shoulders being absolutely level with each other like a pristine they're the four corners of a pristine tissue box which is a quite nice thing when you're working directly sideways onto something like the chair because you can make sure that hips and shoulders stay in, relation, in the correct relationship to the chair. As you swing the leg back, this hip will want to open up. And that's fine, but I want it to be, if I wanted to open up the hip, that would be a completely different thing. And, that, and this in itself is a great exercise. Keep going if you can. Don't use my, uh, my little pause as a reason to stop. So let's try and get the same amount of work going on in that other leg. So this is quite a tough combination. You might want to build up to this. So you might want to just cut out the calf raise, lift the knee, swing back, and just have that leg quite low. As long as you're in a nice diagonal line and you're hinging over the hip. That's the important part. So I'm not letting my back collapse each time. I'm keeping it in the same shape. Let's do two more. And then that's gonna about the same as the other side and we're there great, give those legs a shake, well done 
Brilliant. Okay, I wanted to do a couple more standing things. So pop the chair back onto the other side. So we're coming back onto our first standing leg. And again, just have one hand facing forwards, one hand on the chair or the wall or whatever you, you might be using for support if you've ditched the chair for now. Um, and let's just take some circles of the leg. Are we doing that one first or are we... Mm, okay, no, let's go, let's go for abduction. So, standing next to your chair with the feet together and your feet sort of in the middle of both legs of the back of the chair, if you like. Taking, uh, pop your hand on the hip, taking the other leg out to the side and bringing it back in again. So this is called abduction. You're moving the leg away from the central line of the body. You can't go too high with that leg unless you distort. So unless you hitch the hip or unless maybe that hip rotates back. So we want to again keep your tissue box really square to your front wherever that is. And also if you're used to doing one leg standing work or you want to really try and improve your balance at the same time, hardly use the chair at all. So this will be working both sides. This side is working, the butt is working and the muscles in the outside hip are working to lift that leg out to the side, working against gravity. And this standing leg is working to stabilise the pelvis. So this is very strong. So if it's starting to hurt already, don't worry, you're in good company. We're going to have a lovely stretch out after this. Okay, I think we're going to leave that there. I was going to do something else there, but I'm going to leave that. Let's swap to the other side. Just give your legs a bit of a shake. So when those muscles start to really kick in and it all starts to get a bit tight, generally I would stretch then before I did the other side. Um, but I, we're going to stretch in a moment just to finish off the class. So I want you to... Um, just try and do it on the other side first before we take our stretches. Good, so on the other side, in the middle of the chair, hardly any need for the chair. So both legs stay straight all the way through this. So the places that are changing is the angle at this hip. So it's sort of hinging but in a different part of your thigh but also my ankle. So when I slide the leg along the floor, I'm extending my ankle, pointing my foot just gently, but otherwise the knee's not bending. Both legs are staying straight. I'm trying to remain on my centre of gravity, which is over the ball of this foot that I'm standing on. So I've got this wonderful plumb line all the way down. My pubic bone is above that point as well. If you're here, you'll find that every time you lift the leg, you'll be going back to put weight on it, all the way over, so the leg can move freely. The first thing we did was lifting the rib cage off of the hips, really important again. Standing, tall posture, so important. It's what allows us to free up the joints. Oh, it's getting a little bit harder. Great, okay, I'm feeling, feeling the love there. Oh, I, actually, it's a good job we stopped there because there is one more thing. One more of this similar exercise before we stretch. So, uh, just some circles. So, a bit, like, a bit like what we were doing on the floor earlier. Well, uh, not on the floor, when we had our, our feet on the floor and we were circling the legs out. But this should feel easier and freer because we've got the, the leg isn't attached to the floor. So let's just take a big circle, coming back to your first leg, your first moving leg, all the way round and out. So think of the circle that your knee is drawing. Imagine there's a sticker on that, on that knee. Allow your hips to move a little bit with it, but not low. So, in fact, I don't, so I don't want you to be completely rigid, but equally, I don't want you to be wobbling all over the place. 
So these are outward circles, outwards from our center. My hand is doing the same movement at the moment. Let's change that and come inwards. So a little bit more awkward. Ooh, I'm getting a nice clunk and crunch in that hip every time now. So when you get clunks and crunches, it's just where the tendons and everything's overlapping. Sometimes you can relieve it by standing up even taller. Sometimes it's just not going to go away because of the way those tendons cross over. Ooh, that's hard work. Let's do that on the other side. Again, just give the legs a bit of a shake. Try and ease that cramping feeling as it's starting to come in. So my standing leg parallel, but I'm not being too um, picky about it. There's a, there's a bit of movement going on there, but that's absolutely fine. So draw the biggest circle in front of your body that you can. Allow the hips to go a little bit. So as that knee goes across, this, this hip follows it. As it goes out, allow it to go out. So again, working both sides of the hips, but for different reasons. This is why this is so good. And so functional and also great for the balance. Let's change the direction. Yep, really starting to Feel some work now. There are loads more exercises that I could do with that, but I'm gonna leave that there today. One more. Brilliant. Okay. Let's go to seated back on the chair for, uh, in fact, no, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm always like this in my classes, sorry. Uh, let's do a, seat, a standing figure with four stretch. And then a way to repeat the figure of four stretch uh, when you're seated. So figure of four stretch, let's go back to our first side actually. Standing figure of four stretch. Does what it says on the tin. You make a figure of four with your legs by picking this foot up, placing it, uh, turning it out and placing it above your knee. And you can use anything for support. It doesn't have to be the chair, it could be a bit of the wall. You could do this freestanding, but I'd rather you didn't. I want you to concentrate on the stretch, not trying to balance. So taking the leg across the, the knee, and then it's going to be, you're going to pretend to sort of sit down, and I want you to stick your bottom out. The leg that you've taken across your other knee, that, this is the one where you're going to feel the stretch, hopefully, in that outside thigh and buttock. But you have to be in a good uh, neutral spine. If you're here and you're really rounded and that pelvis is all tucked under like I'm now, the stretch pretty much goes away. I want you to stick your bottom out, stick your chest out, bend that substanding leg and using your muscles try and push the knee down towards the floor and breathe. It's quite strong. Brilliant, let's go to the other side. Crossing the ankle, so you need to be above your knee so that when you bend your knee, it doesn't put pressure on, the, the foot isn't going down through your knee. You need to hinge at your hips and stick your bottom out. Then bend a little bit more, lift your chest even more, push that knee down even more and breathe. It's very strong. The leg that's bending, your standing leg, your supporting leg, make sure the knees are over the toes. Brilliant, and coming up right, wonderful. We're going to do that exact same thing. Now fortunately for me, I realised just as I started that, I was stretching my tighter side first, um, which is my left side. Uh, if you are opposite to me and you've discovered that your right side is tighter, then do your tighter side first as we sit down. So same thing, nice, sitting up nice and tall, cross the ankle over the knee, try and keep this foot that's on the floor, 
Try not to bring it into the middle. Try and leave it opposite your hip. That will actually make quite a big difference. And then for me, just sitting upright here is already quite a strong stretch. If that's too much for you, you might have to lean back. You might need that underneath leg straight and you're just pushing that, that uh, knee down. And if you, do, if you start here, if you feel the need to start here, try bending that knee in. I'm leaning back, but I'm not collapsing back. I'm lifting my chest. And then maybe try and sit upright. But if this is all okay for you, and this, if this feels good, we'll, let's challenge it a little bit more by <laughs> pitching your body forwards. So I'm trying, to, I'm trying to hinge at my hips. I'm trying to keep my back straight-ish at the moment. And this is now really, really strong for me. So my back is fairly straight, it's not completely straight because this is such a strong stretch for me. But now I'm gonna round my back and just lower my shoulders, let my back relax over that leg. Now this is really, really strong. And breathe. and then rolling up slowly. Great, let's just swap to the other side. Sitting up nice and tall. So, so for me the second side, just and because it's the second time we've done this stretch as well, this actually feels reasonably comfortable. Not too tight, watch that foot that's on the floor, it doesn't, it'll want to come over to the middle, to your center line, that will make the stretch easier. Keep it opposite your hip so that both legs are, both thighs are opposite your hip. They're not collapsing into the centre. Sitting up really nice and tall. Just pushing that foot down. Pushing the knee down, sorry. I was thinking about the foot because I was thinking about twiddling the ankle. So you could be here, you could be a straight leg leaning back and then bend that leg in gradually and try and sit yourself up. From here, I'm going to pitch forwards and breathe. Keeping my back fairly straight at the moment, I'm trying to hinge from my hips. And then I'm going to let my uh, back round over, taking my head down, taking my hands down towards the floor and breathe. And then rolling slowly up, stacking the spine, sitting nice and upright. And that was it for today. Well done everyone, I hope you enjoyed.